everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to this BCI podcast number 20, titled Rolling Down During a Short-Term Market Decline. We're going to give a real-life example with World Wrestling Entertainment, Inc., which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol WWE. Now, rolling down is one of our exit strategies that we use in the covered call writing strategy. And normally it's used when the stock price declines, bringing down the price that we paid, or that we generated for the option, and therefore gives us an opportunity to buy back that option at a lower price, and sometimes reselling another one at a lower strike price. So we're going to evaluate a series of trades, and during the course of a contract, evaluate rolling down for WWE. Now, let's define what is rolling down. Well, as I said, it's a covered call writing exit strategy. It can also be used for other strategies, but we're focusing in on covered call writing in this particular podcast. Now, in the BCI methodology, after we enter a covered call trade, buy the stock, then sell the option, we immediately put in a limit order to buy to close that short call, which we originally sold to open. So the 20%, 10% guidelines gives us a framework as to when to buy back that option should share price decline. So uh, for example, in the first half of the contract, had we sold an option for $2, the 20% guideline will tell us to buy back that option if the price of or the value of the option drops from $2 to 40 cents or lower. So we put in a buy to close limit order to close at 40 cents. And midway through the contract, we would change that to 10% or 20 cents. And the reason we have a lower limit order in the latter part of the contract is because theta or time value erosion will deplete the value of the time value of these premiums, thereby giving us less opportunity to generate additional time value profit. So we're willing to pay more at the beginning of a contract to buy back the option than we are in the second half of a contract. So we put in that buy to close limit order at 20%. Now, if that's executed and we decide to roll down that option, then we sell a lower strike with the same expiration date. So for example, had we originally sold the $50 call option and the price of the stock declined, we may buy back that 50 call with the 20% or 10% guidelines and then sell an option at the 45 call, which would generate additional time value premium as you're going to see in just a moment. Now, Alvin, one of our members sent uh, me a series of trades he executed with WWE. So let me share that with you now, and then we'll have a look at the rolling down strategy and how that assisted in mitigating losses and what we could have done to even improve uh, the situation even more. So on 9-28, WWE was trading at 96.73 and Alvin sold the $100 out of the money strike for $1.74. So you can see he generated close to a 2% one month return uh, with the initial trade setup. Now about a week later on October 4th, the $100 call was bought back at 35 cents, meeting that 20% guideline. 20% of $1.74 is approximately 35 cents. Can automate this aspect of the exit strategy, just put in that buy to close limit order, good till cancel, and then should the threshold, uh, in this case of 35 cents be met, that trade will be executed automatically. Now, Alvin waited uh, eight days. And uh, one of the reasons he may have waited was to see if the price of the stock bounced back up again, thereby selling the same option a second time, which would be in the BCI methodology referred to as hitting a double, but that didn't happen. The price of WWE kept on declining. And so uh, on October 12th, he sold the 85 call for 250. That is rolling down because originally the 100 call was sold. It's rolling down quite a bit. One of the questions we would look at is, did he have opportunity to roll down more than just this one time as the price of the stock 
kept plummeting. In any case, reselling, uh, selling that 85 option for 250, when we considered the cost to close the original option at 35 cents, generated an additional $215 per contract. Now, on October 19th, uh, contract expiration, WWE closed at 82.03 below the 85 strike, and therefore that 85 call expired worthless, so the shares were still retained. They weren't sold at that time, but they were still owned at a price of 82.03. Now, one of the things we look at when the price of a stock declines a lot, is this a market issue or is it a corporation issue? So if we took a look at a chart of the S&P 500 over the course of these trades, we would see that there was a huge decline in the S&P 500 starting on the October 9th date, and it just really plummeted way down uh, through the uh, 11th of October. So uh, th those couple days, there was a huge market decline, and that resulted in the decline in price of uh, many stocks, most stocks in the S&P 500, which dropped 100 points. So uh, we can have a look and say, well, you know what, WWE declined, but it was a market issue. It wasn't a corporation issue. Now, if we took a look at the chart of WWE during these trades, we would see that the trade was entered uh, at a time when uh, there was an uptrend. So technically, it was an uptrending stock, and we could certainly understand why Alvin selected WWE based on just the chart. Now then, the price started to decline when the market started to decline as well, and Alvin closed that $100 call uh, on the 9th for 35 cents, meeting the 20%, 10% guideline. Then uh, starting again on uh, the 8th of October, it started to decline even further. Now, no action was taken until the 12th, and that's when the 85 call was sold, thereby rolling down. But on the, the way the chart looks for this particular security, it looks like there were opportunities to roll down one or two more times. Uh, and that's something that evidently wasn't done. So we could have ended up with an even better result had we been on our toes and rolled down more than just that one time. Now, I give Alvin credit for realizing that he had to do something, buying back the option and rolling down. So get an A for that. <clears throat> but could we have gotten an A plus by rolling down one or two more times? And I, I think the answer is yes. The chart also reflects the fact that the option expired worthless because the price of the stock was below that 85 strike. Now let's have a look at the unrealized calculation results. And I say unrealized because the stock wasn't sold at 82.03, it was still owned. So we don't know the final outcome. But at that point in time, the stock was purchased at 96.73 and the at expiration was worth 82.03. That's a loss. $14.70 per share, quite a loss. Now on the option side, Alvin generated $1.74 on the original short call, and then had a net credit from rolling down of $2.15. Remember, $2.50 to resell the 85 call and $0.35 cents to buy back the original $100 call. So that resulted in a net credit of $389 per contract. So uh, the net loss, Per share was 1081 when we factor in the uh, option credits. So I mean, 1081 is not great, but it's better than 1470. Now, could there have been trade enhancements? As I said, the way the chart looked, there was a constant decline in the price of the stock over a period of a couple of days. I do believe that rolling down one or two more times would have helped mitigate even more. And that's between October 4th and October 12th. So I, I believe that was an opportunity lost or maybe two opportunities lost. Now, should the stock have traded much worse than the S&P 500, you could have sold the stock. But that wasn't the case here. It was just one of the stocks that were brought down by the overall market decline. Now, had we sold the stock, we could have bought a new one and started to recover some of the losses with the new covered call position. 
But once again, if we look at the chart of the S&P 500 and we look at the chart of WWE, during that time frame, they appear pretty much the same. So uh, this was not a corporation issue. It was an overall market issue. So let's just summer, <clears throat> excuse me, let's just summarize now. We must have a structured position management plan in place before we enter our trades so that we can react when share price declines. We also have to have certain exit strategies in place if the share price goes to the moon. So we have to have some idea of what to do with any possible scenario that comes up. That's what a blue collar investor does. Preparation through education and practice. Now buy to close limit orders after recovered cold trade is executed is, is something that we should do to automate the exit strategy process regarding uh, the price of a stock declining. We could just automate it by that buy to close limit order. 20% in the first half of the contract, 10% in the latter part of the contract. Keep in mind, folks, that not every trade is going to be a successful one. Uh, most of our trades will be winning trades, but we are going to have some losing trades, and it behooves us to use our position management skill set to mitigate losing trades, and for that matter, to enhance winning ones. Mitigating losses are definitely critical to our overall success. So. If we have a losing trade, we can hold our head up high if we use that position management skill set to keep those losses to a minimum. Over a year, over 10 years, over a lifetime of trading, it will result in quite a difference in the success of our option selling portfolios. Now, for those of you using the strategy of covered call writing, I invite you to get a free copy of the basic Elman calculator. Just log into our website. You could see it at uh, the bottom of our screenshot. If you're watching, if you're just listening, www.thebluecollarinvestor.com. And on the black bar at the top of our web pages, click on the free resources link, put in your email address, and you have the calculator, it's user guide. We also have a put calculator and that user guide along with other files you can download all for free. As far as our educational uh, tools are concerned and products, we have the best selling books on covered call writing, the complete encyclopedia for covered call writing. You just need to start with the classic edition of volume one and then you can move on to volume two. We also have a recently updated covered call writing. A DVD online streaming program with downloadable workbook. Uh, that's uh, another educational product available. Many other, some higher level books and tools. So log into the Blue Collar store, have a look around, and select uh, whatever products you think would benefit your overall trading results. So, ladies and gentlemen, that ends BCI podcast number 20, rolling down during a short term market decline. And we use WWE as a real life example to make our points. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, folks. And most importantly, I hope you benefit from it. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.